Today we are joined by Dr. Tim O'Connell who is in the Natural Resource Ecology and Management Department and he is one of our bird experts. And Dr. O'Connell, you're here today to talk to us about some winter care for birds. Yes, I am. People we, love to feed birds. I do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it's kind of our interest in the garden that time of year mm -hmm. as yeah. well. So um, you've brought with you some different foods. I know there's always some question about, should I buy the expensive? What, what do birds want to eat sure, this time sure. of year? Sure, sure. So um, there are a bunch of things to consider. One of the things that's uh, really commercially available and pretty cheap would be a mix like that. Um, and this is probably how when most people are just starting to feed birds, that's, that's sort of what they'll do. Uh, but there's a lot of filler in here and it's really not a lot of great uh, seeds for birds. Okay. For birds, the whole thing you're looking for or what they're looking for is a high fat content in the seed. And then a seed that they don't have to spend a lot of time cracking open to get that fat content inside. So um, more than this, I would recommend some uh, sunflower seeds. Okay. Now, sunflower seeds, you can get these great big gray striped ones, they call them, but those are pretty woody on the outside. And it's easy maybe for a cardinal to crack into that, but some of the smaller birds, it's not as easy. Right. So better is uh, what we call black oil sunflower seed. And that's the, the small sunflower seeds. They've got a really sort of soft husk and they're easy for uh, even chickadees or titmice to, or even goldfinches to get in there and then get that really nutritious um, sunflower heart. Uh, at, that's the part they're actually eating. Okay, all right. Yep. And for specialty uh, situations, maybe you've got a place where you don't want a bunch of sunflower husks accumulating on the, on the ground, you can just feed uh, sunflower hearts directly. So this is commercially available and this has the husks taken off. Okay, so the, the work's been done for them. Work's been done Do for Do they them. go through this a lot faster then? Or? They can. It's actually kind of funny. Sometimes they'll sit there and they'll still try to take the husk off because <laughs> that's just their sort Nature, of innate yeah. behavior. Um, but generally they'll figure it out pretty quickly. And So this is, uh, this is nice uh, for a, a no-mess application, but it is a lot more expensive. Okay, yeah. and, and you've got some uh, non-seed <laughs> options here. <laughs> there are some non-seed <laughs> options. These are mealworms. These are dried mealworms, and these are commercially available now. And a lot of birds will eat these. Chickadees will eat them, nuthatches, wrens. Um, but so most seed, people... So seed-eating birds will eat these. Is that correct? Yeah, a lot of those birds, uh, a lot of chickadees and, and wrens and things like that, they're really generalists. Okay. Uh, and, in, and in the summertime especially, they'll take a lot of insect food. And that's okay. mostly what they're feeding their babies. Um, but other things like uh, bluebirds will mm -hmm. love to come to um, some dried mealworms. All so, right. Yeah. And, and can we mix these together? I mean, make a little trail mix for our birds? You, or You can do that. Okay. Yeah, you, the way I look at it is you can do kind of whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> um, but what I do for just uh, simplicity's sake and for attracting the largest number of birds is just offer this uh, black oil as okay. my standard. Okay. And then I'll, you know, throw out some peanuts or something like that just to, as a little treat, a little extra treat sometime. Okay. And so do we need to feed the birds this time of year or I mean are they dependent on, on bird food no. that we provide? No, birds have been here a lot longer than we have okay. and they know how to find food and it's uh, it's natural foods especially where you've got a lot of great uh, you know native plants planted and native trees you're gonna have abundant foods available for your native birds. Okay. The other thing is uh, overwintering insects so things like uh, if you're looking you've got some pine trees here with some nice sort of corrugated bark and underneath those flakes of bark there are a lot of overwintering uh, insects and spiders and other invertebrate foods. And that's what chickadees and wrens would have been eating historically. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I tell people, when, if you want to feed birds, do it for you because you want birds close to your house or you want to be able to, to see them and watch them. Um, but the birds don't really need it. Okay. But if you do start feeding birds, keep going later into the winter and the early spring because that's when their natural foods are at their lowest availability. Okay. So they've kind of created that habit that you're providing it and then you don't want to leave them high and dry in the middle. Kind of a jerky thing to do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Man, the old classic bait and switch. Noted, noted. Yeah. Okay, so of course, uh, are there different types of feeders for these different things or what have you found to be the best option for do, that? You can spend a lot of money on fancy feeders. Mm -hmm. uh, you can spend a little bit of money on really cheap feeders. But no matter what, they're all going to fall down. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so what I look for is something that when it falls is not going to break. So this is a design that I found, again, that's com commercially available that I really like. And, and the you thing just I, got this at a local store here? Yep, or? just okay. at local stores Feed here store? in, in Stillwater. Yep. Okay. And uh, it's all metal construction and it's real sturdy. This is marketed as a peanut feeder. Okay. Uh, and you can feed peanuts if you want. That gets a little expensive. <laughs> well, but I just put my sunflower seed in here and it works great. 
Um, birds that can cling to things will come and just take one seed at a time usually. Chickadees will do that, uh -huh. chipmice will do that. Um, so they'll take one seed, fly off to a branch, and then open up the seed there and then come back. So they eat one at a time and the seed lasts in there a good long time. Um, but of course what's going to happen is a squirrel is going to get over here <laughs> and the squirrel is going to open this lid and reach in and, and get a snack. So, uh, so at some point this is going to fall down and you just want to make sure you, it's still going to be workable after uh, you pick it up. But it's pretty heavy duty. It's heavy duty, right. So are, you mentioned birds that will be able to cling to the side of that. Are there birds that like to kind of roost on a, a stick or something and could you put a a stick between there to kind of allow them to do that? Yeah, you could. And then uh, there's some uh, there's some things we'll call seed tray that you'll stick on the bottom okay. of this. So it'll be a um, chance for something like uh, or a goldfinch or a housefinch. They'll sometimes like to just sit there okay. and uh, and take the seed rather than take one at a time. All right. But, you know, as you're indicating, birds feed in different ways. And some of them really, like a morning dove is never going to come and cling to a feeder that's okay. hanging. They feed from the ground. Um, so I always also spread some seed on the ground Okay. You know, to make sure I'm feeding the widest variety of species that are there. Excellent. So yeah. what kind of birds are we seeing this time of year? And will they be around in the summer or they migrate and they're just here in the winter time? All of the above. Okay. <laughs> right? So um, here at the garden, we've had a wonderful uh, hour or so looking around at the birds coming into the, the uh -huh. feeders here at the garden. And that includes uh, local species that are here year round. Uh, Carolina chickadee, tufted titmouse. They're here eating uh, from our feeders in the winter. And then come the breeding season for them, it'll be sort of April and May. Uh, they will switch over to an almost completely insect diet for the summer. Okay. Uh, and that's what they're generally feeding their babies. Okay. Others, we were looking at Harris's sparrows. Mm -hmm. Harris's sparrow is this wonderful big sparrow. It's almost as big as a cardinal. And they breed way up north in Canada. And they winter here in the southern plains. So you find them in Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas and Nebraska. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, and they will come to your feeders. And uh, so that, that's an example of a species that you really are probably helping a little bit by okay. providing it some substance in the, in the wintertime. What about cedar waxwings? I know we mentioned those earlier. So everybody loves cedar waxwings. <laughs> and, and here in Oklahoma, we typically see them in the winter. Okay. And especially when they're sort of moving through in late winter. They typically don't breed in our state. They're, they're more of a farther north breeder. Okay. So you get them in the wintertime moving around with roving flocks of American robin and there's usually a few yellow rump warblers in there. And these are all species that will eat fruits in the wintertime. Cedar waxwings are looking for fruits that have um, reached a point at which they're more palatable. Uh, for some of our hollies, maybe that's not till later in the winter after they've been through a few frosts. And that can make them more easily to digest. Sometimes that actually builds up their alcohol content <laughs> and you get some drunk waxwings. Oh, no. um, but yeah, that's really what they're looking for. They're sort of hitting different fruits at different points throughout the winter. All right. Well, thank you for all of this information. It's been great. I'm always happy to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.